Right. So welcome back to Learning Partner. So in this video, we are going to see inline editing, but with this inline editing, we will be trying to apply the validation also, right? So if you can say this is just a normal table, I have used the JSON placeholder API to get this data. So let me just show you the code. So if you can see, this is just a normal table, right? Then in .ts, let me remove this. Okay. So normal API call is there. Let me just remove unnecessary things. So this is filtered user will be over here. Oh, let's make it user array. And in HTML also, I will use the same. So normal API call is there on the page load. And we have, we have just shown that data into the table using for loop, right? So this is just the normal table. Now we have to make this table with the inline editing. So what does inline editing means? Suppose we should have an edit button over here and all the TDs should be converted to the text box, right? So for that, let's add a TH over here. Let's name it as action. Let me just copy paste the basic code. So another TD and in this TD I have two icons, right? Let me remove this function call. So let's save and check. So now here you can see we have edit icon and the delete icon. Now on click of this edit icon, what we have to do, we just have to convert this text into text box with containing this value, right? So for that, we have to write the event. So that will be click on edit round bracket and we have to pass the object. The object means the for loop instance object that is user. So I will pass it over here. So let's create this function. Right. So from HTML, I'm sending some data so that I need to catch it over here. So let's say item colon any. Right. So whatever the object I'm getting, I just need to add one more flag in this object that is, is edit. and I will make it as true, right? So whatever the items, uh, wherever I'm clicking on edit, that item I'm adding one more property is edit true, right? So this property, I'm going to use it over here. So now in TD, I will just create a div. And for this div, I will use star ng if user dot is edit. So in this particular object, if is edit property is there, and if it is true, then we will show text box. So input type text, square bracket, round bracket, ng model is equal to. Now we need to show the value also, right? So value will be nothing but user dot username. So this we have to pass to the ng model, right? Again, we are going to need the div same like this but only it will be false. If is edit is false, then we will be showing the actual value. So let's save and check. Right, now if I click on edit, you can see we have shown the text box, right? So let's do for the remaining. So I'm just going to need this structure for remaining TDs. Just I have to replace this over here and over here. Let's remove this. Then it will be phone over here and over here. Let's remove this. And the last one website, or let's not make it editable. So let's save and check. Now, so you can see wherever I'm clicking, I can get that as editable. Now, if I have clicked on edit, so this icon should be like save and cancel or something, right? So for that, I can use the same condition like this condition only over here. So this edit and the delete icon will be visible if this is false, means it is not in editable mode. Now I need the same for true. If it's edit, it is true means editable is on 
So let me just get the code from the earlier video I have created. Basic inline. Right, so here I will be posting this. Let me remove this. Because I'm using the same code. In the earlier video, I have already shown how we do the basic inline editing. Now we just have to make the validation. So let's say if I click on edit, you can see we have save and the cancel icon, right? Now on click of cancel, we just need to uh, disable this inline editing, right? Or before the, because in this video, we are going to focus on the validation part. So we on click of edit, we have shown the text box. Now next part is if I remove this, I should get the validation. So this is what we are going to focus. Now to add the validation like this, what I have to do. So this was my text box, right? So here I have to show the validation. So below this text box, I'm going to create one div with class text danger, right? Here I will be using a span. Now here I will say like this is or just required, right? So now we have to show the validation if the text box doesn't have any value. So we have to show the validation. So for achieving the validation, we are going to create a function. So that function means validate form, right? And for this validate form, we will pass the parameter. Or let me name it as any colon any. Now, we have to call this function over here on the ng if star ng if equal to this function, right? So we will pass this and for that function, we have one parameter. So we need to send it. So that will be so we will send the user dot name, whatever the value we have. Let's pass it over here. Now, what logic we have to return over here? So I'm passing the value, right? So simply I can write if item item not equal to empty, then I will return false because I don't want to show that div. But if it is not empty, then I will be returning true. Return true. Right. So if you can see this function, what this function is going to do, whatever the value we get, we are comparing. If value is not equal to empty, we are returning false. Otherwise, we are returning true. So if this function return true, then this div will be visible. Right. So let's save and check if it works or not. Right. So if I'm on click of edit, now it is. Yes. Okay. Let me remove this. So you can see once I remove, I can see the validation. If I pass any value, the validation is gone. So same thing like this with only this function, we can call on all the elements. So this code will be same over all the text box. So let's save and check it now. So with this one function, you can validate all the fields. And this is just a basic, right? But now if you can see, it is not working properly. Why not? Let me save and check again. Okay, because we have just copy pasted and we are sending name only. So now here we have to pass username. Here we have to pass phone. So now it will work independently. So if I click on a date, if I remove this, you can see validation is coming. If I pass the value, it is going. Again, here also same thing. Here also same thing. But now this save icon, like we have to disable or hide or something we can do if the form is not valid. Now, how do we know that all the fields are valid or not? So we have for handling that we have to create one more function. So this should be validate field instead of form. Validate field. And we have to just change it because validate form is we are going to use over update icon. So here validate form. 
save right so while validating form we have to pass the whole object so obj colon any so let's call this function on the update button so cloud was the icon so let's hide it or because this is just icon so we cannot disable it otherwise let's create a button so we can disable it let me just create a button right so here we have a disabled flag right so here we will call the function and we have to send the object that is user so let's get rid of this now for this button we are uh, with proper defining we have using disabled and we are passing a function over here and with that function we are passing the value so here you can write if user dot sorry object we have the property object dot what are the fields which are editable like those we can check so first property was name so if user dot name not equal to empty and opj dot second field was whatever the field you are going to use you just have to use it over here with multiple condition not equal to empty so with this video i'm just applying for not empty like required but if you want like mean length max length pattern all things you can add just you need to just manipulate the functions little bit that's it i'm just i'm checking for the emptiness but you can do the same thing not equal to empty right so this if condition is going to validate like if name username and phone is not empty not empty means it has all the fields as the value so i will return false right otherwise i will return true if any of the field is empty then i will return true return true let's save now and let's check it now on click of edit okay button text is not there let's just add a button text edit sorry update right if we click on edit you can see button is there okay let me save it again we had one space so that's why class was not getting applied so on click of edit you can see button is unable now because i get the pointer but if i remove value you can see button is disabled so this is nothing but a pure example how we can validate a form within a table with the inline editing right now so on the update if i provide the value update is there right then you can pass the value now we just need a cancel button also so let me just create a cancel button so this video was more focused on the what we can say in uh, form validation in the inline editing but let's do the remaining things also so on click of cancel we need to uh, dis i mean we need to show the remove the text box and show the original data right so again click event on cancel let's create the function now how do we know like this is inline editable uh, inline editing is on with this flag is edit so again we need to pass this object over here and on cancel item colon any right so item dot this flag we just have to make it false again false right so let's save and check so again i'm repeating this video is mainly focused on the form validation if you want the whole idea like how we implement uh, the inline editing the complete structure just refer to the video i am i will be providing in the what you can say uh, description okay so currently this row is in inline editing mode but if i click on cancel you can say it is again come back to the normal form because we have just 
from that object we are just assigning the value false and with this value we were deciding like it is inline editing on and off right so this video was focused mainly for the validation so with these two functions we can do the validation so this function was responsible for each field and showing the required validation right so let's say if you need to add a min length and max length so you just need to create more functions let they let's say for username you just need to validate like minimum three characters are needed right so let's create that function validate user name and username colon string right so let's call this function instead of this valid field it validate field we will call this function so we have sent the username now two validations you are going to check first like value is there or not so username not equal to empty right so if it is not equal to empty you can say return sorry if it is not equal to empty now we are going to need two functions first for the required and second for like uh, minimum three character so instead of returning true and false let's return what you can say a validation message right so let's see if if it is empty if the whatever the value we get it is empty we will return simply like required okay in else if it is not empty means it has some value user has provided some value now we have to check for the min length so again we will add if condition if username dot length is greater than two sorry for the pause so what i'm what i have written is like if username dot length is greater than three so we will return empty otherwise we will return character so now this function is returning string right so we can do some changes like if this field sorry here if not equal to empty like this right then this function is going to return value also same same you can pass it over here in interpolation so whatever the error message we show now that will be visible over here so let's save and check it now so you can play date username so if you can see currently we have got required validation but if i pass value see the validation is like this right so same thing what what we used to do in the normal form validation can be achieved can be achieved over here also just we need to write our functions like that because this is going to be in the table so we don't have the control over required main length max length the basic validation we get in the form right so you have to do like this so just more one man time this function was returning string value so if it is not equal to empty then we will be showing this div and we are just showing if username is empty then we are returning required if username is not empty then it will go to this block then we are checking the length uh, less than or equal to less than or equal to equal to three then we are returning empty otherwise the validation message so like that you get this output let's try it one more time so basically we don't have any text so it is showing required validation but if i pass any value see up till three character it shows once we enter the three character then it, uh, validation is message is not there so this is how you can do the validation in the inline table editing 